It is the end of the growing season, which means it's time for a recap. But first, before we go back to the hobby house, I'd like to show you the little hoop house that we built at the shop. And when I say little hoop house, it's actually kind of a big hoop house. It used to be one of those parking structures that was covered in tarps, probably from Harbor Freight or somewhere like that. The old dude that used to store all of his lawnmowers in here, well, he kind of skimped the bill on a year's worth of rent and got out of here. And so he forfeited the rights to this little hoop house. What we did is we yanked off the tarps that were on top of it. We put wiggle track and wiggle wire on the edges and ropes over the tops to hold in some greenhouse plastic, whatever it's called. I got a big old roll of it and we were gonna do the entire thing and we could get two times out of the roll, but we learned that if we skinned it this way and left a little bit of shade in the corner that we could actually get three skins out of the roll. So that's what we did. And we have shaded plants over in the back corner and we have full sun plants over here. And as you can see, we've been growing tons of hot peppers. I've been doing a little bit of trimming because we got some weed seed in the actual uh, you know growing medium here but we have all sorts of habaneros we've got orange habaneros and red habaneros we've got tomatoes hiding off on the edges there we have death spirals which i have been eating habaneros for the past so oh, month or so because covid made it to where i could i can't taste hot stuff very much anymore but let me tell you i took a little nibble of that death spiral oh yeah we, we do have a lot of uh, mosquitoes in here too I took a nibble off the tip of that death spiral, which uh, we've got some over there. They're really like wrinkly looking plants uh, or fruits. It lit me up and just with that nibble, I started getting the hot hiccups. It pretty much ruined my meal. I couldn't enjoy it anymore. So, you know, habaneros not quite as hot as I thought that they were, but we've got, uh, let's see, uh, death spirals, chocolate habaneros and uh, a couple other varieties. I don't even remember right now, but we've just been making hot sauce with them. One of my business partners has been making delicious fermented hot sauce. And this has been pretty cool, actually. We're going to see how long we can grow in here. The other thing that we have, I'll just grab one for the camera. The other thing that we have over in the shaded side is a whole bunch of this aloe vera. My wife had thrown away a pot of aloe vera that was, you know, it was just a little leggy. There was nothing wrong with it. And instead of letting that go to waste and rotting out in the yard or in the trash can, I pulled all the starts over here and we currently have uh, oh, probably about 40 plants like this after a season of growing that, you know, hardly any attention on aloe vera, of course. So just kind of cool, kind of cool to see it uh, bounce back and actually be useful and, and get so much aloe, which anytime you have any skin problems, aloe is pretty good for that. So maybe we'll convert it into an aloe paste at the end of the year. Maybe we'll just give them away. Who knows? But uh, hard to kill aloe. Kind of cool to see it bounce back. So now what we're going to do is go over to the hobby house and I am going to tend the gardens there a little bit and talk about what I learned this year. So we are over here at the Hobby House Gardens, and as you can see, it's fall time and it's time to do a little bit of trimming. I'll let a couple of my lettuces go to seed, and I'm just gonna talk about the lessons that I learned this year while I clean up a little bit. We'll see if these little scissors can do the job. But a lot of these lettuces, you know, they're, they're still edible, but they are, they are bitter at this point after they bolt and go to seed like this. And once I clear this away, you're actually going to see that there's a whole bunch of little seedlings here that are perfect timing for me to have a little lettuce garden through the winter time. And a lot of lettuces are very frost tolerant. They will survive underneath snow. They will survive down to, uh, you know, 15, even lower Fahrenheit and still taste really good. And once we get the spring, as long as they survive through winter, which a lot of times the roots will, it ends up being a spring crop that is ready really fast. So. One thing I didn't mention in the last video is that I am employing the no-till method here. So that means we are not going to till my garden. There is nothing that I'm going to do to prepare it for next year. Other than essentially throwing down maybe some more compost. If we've got a lot of weeds that are coming up, then I'll put down some more cardboard underneath the compost. We will go like that. Uh, one thing I would also like to point out is that I can actually walk in this garden, even though it was fresh materials that I threw out. I compacted them all, and that gives us two benefits. 
first being able to walk in the garden and the second is that your plants will actually hold so if it's a tall plant it's not going to flop over we've got uh looks like some some prickly lettuce here that's interesting i don't know if that's something that just uh maybe i had it in the garden let's taste it let's see yeah it's pretty bitter as well i mean it's bolted so i'm not going to keep that seed it will be interesting to see what all of this other stuff that has popped up turns out to be. Because there's really no telling what sort of crossbreeds that we had with our lettuces. What else did I learn this year? Oh, I can tell you that corn needs a good bit of water watermelons need lots of water who would have thought and if you water them inconsistently they split just like a lot of big old fruits of course and the pumpkins I, I got two pumpkins out of the patch they were little bitty tiny pumpkins they didn't really work out so well because I wasn't watering enough and it ended up killing the vine I, I let it go through the hottest part of summer without watering just to kind of see how how tolerant the yard was hey we got uh one kernel of corn in this this corn <laughs> these were late sprouts and uh you know i'm just gonna eat that it's perfect actually mm. oh that's good mm. so let's see where was i yeah, the watermelon vines, they didn't like the, the little cold snap that we had, so they died back already. Mm. Yeah, well, next year I'm going to try to grow my corn a little better, because that's delicious. And since I'm doing a no-till, I'm just cutting these plants off right at the ground level, and we keep those roots buried. Those roots are going to decay, and they are going to become feed for the next years oh we got a, uh, another little green bean coming up here very nice oh, a nice little fat green bean i'm also going to grow more green 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 <laughs> that's a tongue twister grow more green beans next year mm. because man are they good out of the garden but i am going to have to put up some rabbit fence the other lessons that i learned there's a lot of rabbit pressure here a whole lot of rabbit pressure and of course the deer found us six years at this place not not a single deer and i put a pear tree in the backyard and the deer immediately find it like within three days mm, 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 mm. Mm. Mm, right we're going to find out what this lettuce crossbred with because i'm just going to shake this out gonna get those seeds in the into the dirt and the next good rain they'll sprout mm. all kinds of bolted lettuce in here and all kinds of little sprouts too I'm just gonna put all this plant matter into my compost pile we'll be good to go now let's see this was uh some of that peaches and cream corn or whatever it's called looks like it dried out this is more seed than what i threw out so i'm just going to save that so we'll save the seed and see what happens the crossbreed won't be stable because it was a hybrid breeding with another hybrid peaches and cream with peaches and cream or whatever it was called and when you breed two hybrids together you get instead of hybrid vigor you get uh who knows what essentially we got one little worm in here we're gonna we're just gonna toss him out nope oh, set those aside and continue mm. i got one more green bean here too so next year Next year, I will be more careful about watering. I will water more regularly. Mm, mm. 
Mm. I'll grow more green beans. The kale seemed to really like the spot. I'm gonna see if these sprouts are indeed lettuce. Mm-hmm, yep, tastes like lettuce. So it looks like I've got hundreds here, hundreds of sprouts. There's a good bit of powdery mildew on our pumpkins on the leaves, which that's, that's something that pumpkins are, are pretty susceptible to. Boy, we got some interesting kernels on this. Big old flat kernels. I'm just gonna peel off a couple. And we'll see. It won't hurt anything to try to sprout these next year. Or even over the winter. Give ourselves a little head start. But yeah. Those are viable seeds. That'll that'll do. This is more seeds than what I originally started with, so that is a bonus. Especially just for learning this year. There we go. That's a lot more tidy. I think I got most of the things out. Let's see some dandelions here and there, which usually I don't get rid of. But in this case, I'm gonna get rid of these. Oh, we have ourselves a scale, scale watermelon. The vines pretty much died off of this one. A little scale watermelon. It probably got sweet, but there's not gonna be anything in there other than a few seeds. Which maybe I'll save that for seeds. We'll see what happens. Probably best to just use store-bought seeds for watermelons so that we know what we're gonna get at least because watermelons are one thing that takes a lot of input and it would be a shame to spend a lot of time and get nothing. Much like what already happened this year. And we'll, we'll clean up some of these vines. We're gonna spend more time cleaning up the vines later. Probably just run over them with a mower and mulch them and then throw that into the mulch pile. That'll be the easiest way to go about it. Yeah, we got lots of vines, lots of vines to clean up. And next year, at least in this spot, I don't think I'll do any more vining plants. It takes up too much room. It's not exactly what I want moving forwards. Oh yeah, a couple of, couple of trees too, silver maples. We'll just pull those straight out. That will come back if we don't. Very nice. Well, I'm gonna continue weeding this, but good lessons for the year. I learned what to do and what not to do with our pumpkins, with the watermelons, that it is a lot easier to do kales and lettuces in this particular spot. I also learned that throwing out that topsoil from a bag was a mistake. So any of the, the new spaces that I'm going to be growing in, I'm not going to be using that bag topsoil. I'm actually just going to go straight with the cardboard covering and a little bit of compost on top and just call it good. Because otherwise, a lot of these plants took a long time to get through that really bad compost or a really bad topsoil that I used. But once they got into the topsoil of the yard, they did extremely well. So there is that. Indeed. Good lessons. Good lessons. And next year, hopefully we'll do better. If you do have any questions about this, leave your comments down below and I can even forward you on to some other channels if you're interested that has more information on the no dig, no till method, along with a lot of growing information. And ooh, I see some more green beans. Yeah. I have myself a little green bean snack today. As always, thank you for tuning in. Have a good day.